Heyo, people, and welcome to another edition of Request Rundown. We've got five more requests from the lovelies over on Patreon, starting with the latest from Vader, Madness and Solitude. Vader are a Polish death metal band that have been active since around the early 80s, but emerged onto the scene around the early 90s, first with a bit more of a thrash-tinged sound that kept kind of expanding into a more brutal, chaotic soundscape as the years went on. And, uh... Yeah, that's about all I know about these guys. Truth be told, when it comes to Vader and the more extreme versions of metal in general, if I'm being honest, I'm sure a lot of you longtime viewers have probably noticed that, uh... Yeah, I'm kind of a total pleb when it comes to this stuff. Mm. I do love me some metal, but... I mean, you know me, I'm also kind of a basic bitch. I love thrash, I love mellow death, I love groove metal. I love something that has a nice melody I can stick to while I'm thrashing, you know? When the genre starts to get too bloody or too black... I don't know, sometimes I can stick with it, but I honestly just tend to have... difficulties. Like I said, I'm a basic bitch. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that just goes to show you that I am by no means an expert. And when it comes to Vader, um, I know they exist, but that's about it. I don't even know, like, what Vader is supposed to be a reference to. Is that a reference to Star Wars or is that a reference to the wrestler? What time is it? What time is it? No, I'm seriously asking, what time is it? No, it might not be that time though, Vader. It might be this time. I'm very confused about what time it is, and this band is not making it any easier for me. But hey, Vader has been at it for nearly 30 years now, so they must be doing something right to have so many people keep coming back for so long. And believe me, an album called Releasing in the Middle of a Global Quarantine? Yeah, I won't lie, that does hit a little close to home. So given all that, what does Vader's latest have to offer? Um, I can say this much. It sure is Vader, all right. Again, this could just be because I'm a pleb, and this is another one of those plebs I view reviews here. But I was aware of these guys, but I never had the chance to really you know, sink my teeth into their greater catalog. I don't know, if you put them on a playlist, I wouldn't be able to tell your impressions in the bloods from your black to the blinds or anything like that. Thanks, Wikipedia. But I'm not entirely unfamiliar with Vader. I've stumbled across them here and there, and having listened to this album, I kind of hate to say it, but all I can say is that, yep, this sure sounds like another Vader record, all right? I mean, I say that, but it's not like that's a bad thing. Vader certainly isn't a bad band. Vader initially started as a thrash group, and, you know, even in some of their later works, I've always noticed that that's never a side to their sound that they've completely abandoned. They still have just a teensy bit of that thrash genesis to them. They're far from a thrash band these days, but even this late in their career, you can hear the influences there. They've got the speed and the raw brutality of a death metal act, make no mistake, and James Stewart, wait, wait, James Stewart, that's really his name? James Stewart, no joke? Oh, shut down, Gracie. I just want to tell you a little bit about Satan, yeah. James Stewart's drums in particular are an absolute maelstrom of double bass, slamming snare work, and heavy, thunderous cymbal clashing. This album is a death metal record, but when you listen to some of that guitar work, and you can still hear the little bits and pieces of thrash that never truly abandoned them. When, uh... I'm just gonna call him Pete and Spider. When Pete and Spider shred, particularly on their solo work, man, can it get elaborate and interestingly soaring. Overall, these guys haven't lost their touch. The music is intense, insane, and energetic, and it's brutal right down to its core. You know, all things considered, it's a damn solid piece of death metal that fans of the genre will probably get at least a few good spins out of, I'd wager. It really speaks to the acumen that these guys possess, that they're still able to pump out music this efficiently solid, even after all this time. I mean, Vader is still out there kicking ass, but... 
Oh, that that's also kind of the biggest issue I have with them, you know? It's a solid Vader record. And absolutely nothing else. I'd be tempted to say that these guys are a band that potentially has the problem. You know, they're just kind of comfortable in their niche, and they don't have much incentive to move or grow. But like I said, I'm also not an expert with this band. I'm sure some of you people more familiar with their work could probably educate me as to whether or not this band deserves to be classified as having the problem. But even taking that in mind, even with my limited knowledge of this group, I was able to pick this album up and still go, Yep, that's a Vader, all right. You, you, you see what I mean? There's at least a somewhat solid case to be made there. But hey, like I always say, there's nothing inherently wrong with being a one-trick pony, especially if you're particular good at your one trick. And you know, Vader is pretty damn good at what they do. I might not be able to say much more than that, but... You know, if this seems like something that'd be up your alley, give it a shot. They still got it, and it's still a fun little death metal sort of slam down. I can get behind that. Gets three and a half Vader bombs out of five. What time is it? It's Vader time! I'll be going to my death! Ah, shit. Oh, no. Um, crap. So, uh, <laughs> remember when I said when it comes to metal I'm more of a thrash and speed metal, uh, kinda dude? Oh, dear. Um, prepare to get pissed off at me because even though I said that I'm a thrash guy, uh, I can't say I've ever been all that into Testament. <laughs> It's not even for any, like, specific reason or beef or anything like that. It's not like I hate them or anything. I mean, fuck, Testament is basically a thrash institution at this point. Hell, I've even heard some people say that this is a band that belongs in the big four of thrash. And you know, there's a part of me that honestly can't necessarily argue that. I can't really deny that they deserve in a very important place in Thrash's history. They've always delivered a very intense and raging brand of Thrash that's worthy of that spot. If you wanted to say they belong there, I wouldn't necessarily argue it against you, but... I don't know, pe people Anthrax gets a bad rap. While I have a great deal of respect for Testament, the music itself... I don't know, I've always been kinda take it or leave it, you know? I don't know, maybe it's just because they're a little bit before my time. But I became aware of Testament later down the line, and I got to go back on a decent amount of their stuff, and I've always respected the stuff that they've put out. I can't say there's ever been a record from them I've heard that just made me absolutely want to just lose my shit or anything. I've never heard this band put out anything that was like, a Saint Anger, or a Risk, or anything like that. More to their credit. But on that same token, I can't say there's ever been a full Testament record, at least back to front, that absolutely wrecked. There's never been a Testament record that I would just say, oh, you have to spin this record. I, I don't know, man. They've, they've never been a band of terribly deep lows, but they've never been a band of, like, terribly great highs either, in my opinion? You know what? I never said I wasn't a big fat poser, okay? Maybe finally having the chance to sit down and take an album of theirs in critically will give me a chance to really see what they're all about. And, you know, on first listen, I can at least say that, like Vader, they haven't lost any intensity with age. Hell yeah, man. The riffage on this record can be damn catchy in places, and the lead work is also very skillfully executed. The drum work is terrific, the bass is very thick and meaty, and Chuck Billy's got a nice raspy delivery that, while not necessarily transcendent or anything, still fits well with the thrash aesthetic and sound. I mean, Lord knows, we've heard a lot younger guys pull off way worse vocal performances. I mean, hell, Dave Mustaine still can't sing. Yeah, a lot to enjoy on this record, but... See, ooh, here's the thing. I could almost, like, copy and paste my Vader review into here 
with the general talking points I have to say. Like I said, I'm a little too ignorant on Vader's catalog to say whether or not they have the problem, but man, I've been listening to Testament on and off for like the past at least decade and a half now, and again, like with Vader, all I can say about this record is, yep, that's a Testament, all right. Testament definitely feels like a band where I could say they have the problem. They're a somewhat egregious case of it, too, I won't lie. Uh, at least from the stuff that I've heard over the years. I don't know, man. You listen to Testament once, you've heard pretty much everything you're gonna hear from Testament. I mean, say what you want to about, like, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, whatever. At least they've tried to evolve their sound over time. Granted, yes, that came with some very mixed results, but at least they had the bravery to try. Outside of the more polished and modern sounding production on this record, I'm not sure there's a lot more I could say about this album that you can't just say about a lot of Testament's other works, particularly in the last few years. It's an old school thrash record that sounds like an old school thrash record, warts and all. This 2020 record still has a lot of the old school thrash hangups that a lot of bands grew out of in the 90s and the 2000s. Songs drag on for way longer than they really need to, things can get a little homogenous and uncreative in places, and really, at the end of the day, even if you aren't a really big Testament fan, like me, like even if you don't necessarily vibe on this band specifically, if you're just familiar with thrash, there's probably not a lot on this record. You haven't heard before, either from them or from other bands, it's just so token. But again though, I can't necessarily even argue that that's a bad thing. Testament know what they're good at, and they're still pretty good at it. Playing the long game has, for the most part at least, pretty much worked out for them, so I don't know, whatever I have to say, whatever misgivings I may have with this record, kind of irrelevant at the end of the day, isn't it? Uh, while it certainly doesn't reinvent the thrash recipe, like at all, it still does take all of the old ingredients and makes a pretty sumptuous dish with them. I think that's all anyone would really ask from Testament these days. Uh, no, it's not album of the year material, not in my book anyway, but hey, there's still something to be said for remaining this proficient even after all these years, and still being able to thrash it out with the best of them. Titans of Creation gets three and a half old dogs out of five new tricks. Damn it! I have to at least try. I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. Why would you ask me to review a Joe Satriani album? Asking me to review a Joe Satriani album is like... Asking a dog to review its kibble? Like, I don't know, what do you want me to even say? I mean, uh, do, do you have anything to say there, buddy? Huh? What do you got to say? Huh? What, what, what's your analysis? What's your analysis? I need your thoughts. Hashtag thoughts on? Hashtag thoughts on. Hashtag thoughts on. I need a thousand words on the merits of Alpo versus Yukonuba. Who's a good gatekeeper? Who's a good little cultural gatekeeper? Yeah, you're a cultural gatekeeper. Yeah, you are. People, do you see what I have to work with here? Jesus. But uh, I've reviewed instrumental records before. It's certainly not impossible to do, but like, people, I am just the last motherfucker who should be speaking with any kind of authority on stuff like this. I do not have extensive experience with Joe's catalog or anything like that. I'm not an expert on the guy. I listened to Surfing with the Alien a bit in high school. I, I thought that was all right. I stumbled across his early Squares record last year. Uh, you know, the band he was in before he went solo. That was kind of interesting, I, I won't lie. Uh, Imagine if the Vapors had a guitarist who was way too overqualified for the gig. That was interesting. Um, 
Uh, God, what else has Satriani done? Um, Chicken Foot? I vaguely remember Chicken Foot? Does anybody else remember Chicken Foot? I don't know, people. If you want somebody to break down specifically how this album marks a specific moment in his career growth and his trajectory, I am not the guy to be watching here, but, um, I don't dislike Satriani or anything. The dude does have outlandishly good skills behind the axe. He's arguably one of the best shredders in the business, and he's been at it for a very long time now. Dude doesn't really have anything to prove at this point, does he? He's carved his niche, he's made his good records, he's made his money, he's gotten his fame. I don't know, he probably doesn't even have to go out there and do any of this, but he still does. And he's still pretty damn good at it. Can't fault the guy for that. Hey, more power to him. But from like a just critical perspective, I don't know, what do you want me to talk about? I could try to break down the specifics of this record, but... Man, I don't know what to tell you. Were you expecting a dramatic and bold deviation from the work Joe's been doing since 1986? I don't know why you would, but people, yeah. For an album called Shapeshifting, very little shapeshifting happens on this record, you know? It sounds like a Satriani record. That both works for and against him here. I mean, Joe is an exquisite guitar player. He basically just uses his time on this thing to flex and shred and just dazzle us all with the insane licks, streaks, and solos. He's capable of pulling off all impressive stuff, and to his credit, it's all great. But, like, I don't know, it's a Satriani record, so it just sounds like every other Satriani record you've probably ever heard in your life. And not to mention the other instruments. Pfft, who cares? The drums, the bass, the keyboards, basically every instrument that isn't the guitar on this record is just mixed kind of shittily, and it, it all just kind of fades and fuzzes in the back. Like, everything on this album the only reason it exists is to prop up Satch's guitar work. I mean, the guitar on a Joe Satriani record is like Poochie on Itchy and Scratchy. When the guitar isn't on screen, all of the other instruments should be asking, where's the guitar? Great, great. Just leave them right there on the floor on your way out. But I mean, people, at the same time, if you're into Satriani, that's basically what you signed up for. I mean, complaining about the guitar taking up too much focus on a Satch record is like complaining that McDonald's focuses way too much on the hamburgers. Like, homie, if you ain't here for that, then why are you here? I'm here specifically because this was a Patreon request and somebody paid good money to have my particular thoughts on this one. But if that weren't the case, if I were just like browsing this on my own spare time, I mean, I'd probably give it a listen, you know? I like Satriani's work. I can always appreciate a little bit of skillful guitar wankery. There, there's a side of me that really respects what the guy is capable of. But I mean, just outside of that, I'd probably listen to it like once, think, oh, hey, that's nice, and then never think about it again. And if you're not just like a Joe Satriani super fan, not really sure I could say you have to go too far out of your way for this one. Um, it's Satriani, and it's good for what it is, but it is a Joe Satriani record. No more, no less. Shapeshifting gets three Joe Satrianis. No more, no less, out of five. Oh boy, Siren. This is a review where I have to tread a bit cautiously. This is still a band that's relatively new. They're a power metal outfit out of Calgary, and they've only been at it for roughly three years now. They've developed a small following so far, and their first record here, independently produced and released, this is, you know, this is a band that's just out here trying to make it work. I wouldn't judge these guys on the same 
standards as I would a Vader or a Testament. These guys are just trying to get their foot in the door and recent events cannot be helping them at all right now. Like my heart goes out to them in that respect for sure. The requester for this one likely just tossed this my way in hopes that I'd be able to drum up a bit of hype and give them some exposure and help them in creating buzz and hey, get hype people, brand spanking new band. Here's the thing though, I, I don't feel like I should do that. I mean, you know, you can definitely tell they're trying their best and, you know, more power to them. But man, listening to this record, it's definitely got some rough patches. For one, the mix is really just dreadful. The drums are weirdly muted. The guitars have a very odd mix of effects and reverbs on them. They sound just way too echoey. They sound echoey in places where they shouldn't sound echoey. They lack the power and drive that a lot of power metal sort of guitar work really lives and thrives on. Everything is just too spacey and too sort of... Uh, it, it, the guitars lack power on a power metal album. I mean, you kind of see the problem just right out of the gate, right? And to add to that, the bass mixing here is like just barely even there. You can barely even hear the bass on this record. Believe me, if you've got an ear for production, you will have a very hard time ignoring this kind of stuff. This is what I like to call a micro band. You know, they're a band just, just hammering things out in their local scene. They're just trying to get their foot in the door and they're working with the tools they have available to them. I'm willing to overlook some of the little bumps and rougher edges. Hey, most bands do sound pretty rough on their first try, so I mean, I'm willing to grade on kind of a curve as far as the production goes. What is a little less forgivable is the music itself, the guitar work itself, nothing special. I mean, again, the mix does nothing to help them out, but like, really good guitar work can often overcome a particularly bad mix. There are plenty of records where we've seen that happen, but... Nope, that ain't on here. A lot of the riff work and the melody creation here is just very basic and unexciting. Same can be said for the bass melodies, and again, while the mix does do a lot to neuter the drum work in particular, even through the mix, you can just you can just kind of tell there's not a whole lot going on here. For a power metal record, wow, does this thing lack power. There's just not a lot going on with this record. There are little bits of negative space laced all throughout it, where like either a guitar lick or a bass riff or a stray drum beat, something, anything could have gone in there to help volumize the sound and help beef it up a little bit, but nothing happens. Errors like that speak more to the writing and the overall performance than it does with any issues in the studio. I mean, this is just a very weak and underwritten record, just real talk. And speaking of issues with the writing, ugh, this record has a huge pet peeve of mine. Every single track has an instrumental interlude that comes before it. You heard that right. Every single track. Every other track on this album is an instrumental lead-in to another track. Half of this album you can just completely fucking skip. Like, come on. I mean, I get it, yeah, it's supposed to be a concept record about the actual sirens of Greek folklore and whatnot, luring sailors to their death. I get that they wanted to establish a mood here, but A, look, this makes the album an absolute nightmare if you want to put it on shuffle or put it on a playlist or anything like that. I keep telling you bands that this is, this is a nightmare for those of us who like to, who like to shift and mix. And B, look, I know you guys wanted to build atmosphere, but getting a guy in there to do a bad pirate impression for 30 seconds, does not an atmosphere build. I'm sorry people, but there are just 
not a lot of positive things I can say about this record. Uh, one positive thing I will highlight is uh, the group's vocalist, Sloan Vox, has a pretty, surprisingly flexible, and very bombastic delivery. She's easily the most interesting factor behind this band. She has a great set of pipes, and she delivers her vocals with a lot of charisma. It's kind of a shame the rest of the band cannot back her up with that at all. Like, man, she is on this level, and the rest of the band is like, mm. But again, I don't want to be too hard on these guys. Like I mentioned, they're a very small group, and they're still in that beginning phase of trying to get themselves figured out. And they're just out there in the scene trying to make it work for themselves. And you know, again, this is the most shitty time imaginable to be a small band right now. I get it. I mean, the requester here probably wanted me to stir up some hype for this band, but when I listen to this record, all I can think of is, wow, this is a band that is not ready for prime time yet. That's just the way it is, people. It's possible that they might get there. Like I said, they do have an ace in the hole with their vocalist, and outside of like, you know, the crappy production, which can be fixed, and, you know, those interludes, like, God, lay off the interludes, holy shit. But outside of, like, stuff like that, there wasn't too much on this record that was, like, really, like, cringeworthy or embarrassing. This isn't a band I'd be ashamed to be caught listening to, but they are just... Man, they have a lot of growing to do. This isn't necessarily an incompetent band, but you can just tell they need a lot of work and development before they'll be at their full potential. You never know, but I do have to be honest about the material that's presented to me. And at present, yeah, this band could use a lot of work. That's all I'm saying. Beyond the Depths gets... Two and a half horny pirates out of five. And that's me being generous. Milk Teeth. How do you chew? No, seriously. Milk Teeth, indie punk outfit out of Stroud, England. They've definitely been making some waves here recently, particularly after some fairly successful stints opening for acts like Pup and Enter Shikari and the like. I actually did get the chance to catch these guys' first record, Vile Child, about four years ago, and I remembered generally liking it, but it was also one of those, uh, how do I put this? water slide albums. That is to say, it's fun while it lasts, but it uh, slips in and then slips right back out again. Enjoyable, but not a necessarily substantive record that really sticks to you in any big particular way. That was four years ago, though. In the meantime, though, Milk Teeth has gone through a dramatic lineup shift, with singer, bassist, and principal songwriter Becky Blomfield as the sole remaining member, and M. Foster and Jack Kenny from Nervous filling in for guitar and drums, respectively. This is almost an entirely different band from the one we got to know four years ago. So, how does the group hold up now with all these shakeups and all this, you know, this dramatic turn of events? One thing I'll say, fans of Milk Teeth's old sound, you might be in for a bit of a challenge with this. The band has been stripped down from a four-piece to a three-piece, and on this album, I'd say it definitely shows. Whereas Vile Child had its little moments where the two guitars could play off of each other and take us into the occasional bit of atmospherics or loftiness, it could get a little moody in places here and there. This record doesn't even try to do that. It's basically a good old-fashioned power trio affair. It's louder, more bombastic, and much more straightforward in its melodies. I wouldn't say it's the most dramatic leap in sounds of the world. It's not like Milk Teeth were ever like Deftones or anything like that, but then again, this is a more rootsy, basic kind of feeling record. It's kind of a more simplistic sort of vehicle. That's not to say it's bad by any means. Hey, the stripped down sound kind of fits them surprisingly well. And overall, I 
can't say I'm disappointed with the album sonically. It's different, but not bad by any means. Like I mentioned up top, this is an almost entirely new band operating under this name, so... Yeah, of course things are probably gonna sound a little bit different, and man, it really does. That I can say. The same can be said for the lyrics on this one as well. Again, it's, you know, not like this band was ever, like, Radiohead when it came to lyrical structures or themes, but I don't know, even compared to their old work, this album is a much more blunt force experience. A lot of the songs take on a much more angry, resentful mood. I mean, I hear lyrics and songs like Better that go, I deserve better, you can't be better. Or in Transparent, where Blomfeld sings, I'm not your silly little girl, do you think that you're my world? Or in the very opening track, where the chorus is, I've given up on you, 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 over and over again. You just hear that, and you're like, Wow, okay, whatever happened in this band, it was not pretty, god damn. The one word I'd use to describe this record as a whole is blunt. It's not pulling any punches, it's not trying anything too fancy, it doesn't have anything to hide, it's just a raw, gritty, naked exposure of the turmoil that Blomfeld has gone through over the last few years. This album is basically her Attempting to burn the old memories down, salt the earth, and rebuild everything anew from scratch. Even with this record being a self-titled release, so much about it screams, okay, alright, we we just we just need to do everything over again. Reboot! Reboot, this album is basically a reboot. But circling back to my opening points, those of you that were all about their old sound, those of you that were all over Vile Child, well they're traces of it on here. It's not been completely abandoned, but this is not Vile Child Part 2 at all. It's a departure, and a pretty dramatic departure at that. But it's not one I can say is entirely unwelcome. Like I mentioned, for as pleasant as that last album was, it didn't stick to me at all. I'd forgotten I'd even listened to it until I had to come back around for this review. And this record? I don't know, maybe I'm just a sucker for a good power trio, but I don't know, the band certainly does have more oomph as a three-piece, and this angrier bent is definitely something they're not bad at pulling off. I can't say I'm head over heels in love with this necessarily, but hey, if you were feeling the likes of, say, Slot Face or Thick from earlier in the year, Add this to your listening list as well. I can easily see this one growing on me throughout the year. It's nice to see that even after such a dramatic shakeup, Milk Teeth, they can still pull out some pretty impressive stuff. Overall, I dug it. I dug it. Milk Teeth gets four reboots out of five. But what did you think? Have you heard any of these albums? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you like what you see, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're at it. In the meantime though, I'm Crash Thompson, and I'll see you in the next video. Super special thanks to Brian and Brian Feld.